Today is Wednesday, March 20th, 2019. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is our recap of Survivor Edge of Extinction, week five. That's right. We got episode five and six. I'm fine with this. I'm saying let's just do it this way from here on out. Double episodes every week. What do you think? I think that would be great if they would only let us decide. Yes. It really should turn that part over to us. I think so, too. We put our time in. We've earned it. It should be her call. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... We'll be sure to tell them. For that. this double episode, they gave us one title, Yee. though. And it was, It's Like the Worst Cocktail Party Ever, courtesy of David Wright. Yeah, you had said just before we went to Tribal Council, I didn't hear that yet, do you? And I said, no, but it sounds like something they'd say more at the Tribal Council with mm. the two drives. And you're like, that's true. <laughs> and it was. We were right. Uh huh. I love how you can't help yourself out of the gate. You go from zero, not even previously on Survivor, and you're already at the second tribal council. Hey, you goober! You uh, you brought it up. You yeah, said David it, it, said it. It must be my. I fault. just told a little tale. <laughs> previously, but look how I humor you, darling. Previous, uh, previously on Survivor over at the Manu camp, Wendy was making enemies. Yep, yeah, that's I liked much, hearing that since her, I had her down to go. That's her mo. Mm-hmm. Yep. And at the Kama tribe, well, Joe <laughs> thought he was making friends, but maybe not that so much. That didn't make me feel so good. Yeah. And at Lesu, we had. David and Rick pairing up. You had Kelly and Lauren pairing up, and that left War Dog in the middle to be the swing vote. So, mm. bye bye, Rick. Off he goes to Edge of Extinction, which is where we pick this double episode back up there on day 12. Rick's out getting some firewood. He says he's here with three people that are happy that I failed. <laughs> so, it ended on day 16, right? So, that was a four day for the two episodes? So, two days per episode? No. No, because the last right. one was 14, 15, and 16. So two days for this one, but three days for the second one. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> well, my mind was sidetracked. Yep. Rick says he's up for another test, <laughs> though, even though he's here with people. <laughs> now who, yours is. Who don't. Uh, well, I'll, I'll fix it in the edit. <laughs> okay. Boom. We're over to the reward challenge. Peanut butter jelly down. Peanut butter jelly down. Peanut butter jelly down. I think we would all enjoy this one. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Who doesn't love peanut butter? Well, I guess some people might be allergic. Look, so. You guess? Yeah, I'm sure there are. Mm, no, but, I know there are. But that's, but that's a pretty good I'm reward. not. So for me, mm, yeah. peanut butter is always a go-to. Right. So for the winning tribe, the first place tribe, they're going to get PB and J's and all the fixings so they can make more. And what else was it? Was some milk? Yeah, yeah. cold milk and yeah. uh, uh, they got a loaf of bread and a jar of the peanut butter and the jelly. That would be the fixings. Yep. All I right. Think that's second, about it. Yeah. All right. Second place, <laughs> they they would get some sandwiches, so that would be cool. Hey. Every little bit Certainly helps. Certainly better than nothing. All right, so we're we're back with the bolos. We've seen the bolo throwing before, and this can be fun. So they got to get over a bunch of obstacles and collect some bolos, and then they've got to land them on a wooden frame. Who pretty, knew that was going to be so hard? Pretty straightforward. Bless <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so it starts off with a rope bramble. I think that's what he was calling it. Yeah, so they, but the little people like Julie and Wendy just zipped right through that. Even War Dog seemed to make quick time of it. For yep, yep. He some was folks, first through on his tribe. For some folks, it held him up more than others. Yep. 
and they they have to put someone up on their shoulders to get the first pair of bolos that they have to throw and uh, doesn't go so well for David (laughs) they about dumped him on his face (laughs) on the first lift and then he he can't manage it at all well I'm not sure who all contributed to that oh they all did if there's anything that we learned in this double episode it's that everyone in Lesu is incompetent to some degree or another (laughs) i would say that lauren is their best she's the best athlete but that's the best of the worst which isn't that great when it comes now if if there were was any confusion we had prior to these two episodes about how awful they are in challenges not feeling well not eating she does better than the other three put together. Probes just it just tickles him. He enjoys talking about their struggle. <laughs> Meanwhile, Manu and Kama just blow right on through, collect their first two bolos, and uh, eventually they. I love Joe. Get David out of the way and get Lauren up there, so she's able to um, get their bolos down eventually. Okay, so Kama and Manu they just blow through, collect their second set of bolos, and start throwing. And Probst tells us uh, every tribe member has to land a bolo, which means, oh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Joe couldn't do it all. He couldn't carry him, so it was designed to, to nullify him to a degree. Well, and yet his tribe still came through. Lauren, I, I think he gives good direction as well. Lauren, he's certainly a good role model mentor in that regard yeah. when it comes to the challenges. <laughs> Yeah, Lauren ends up taking a fall, too. You noticed it, I think. War Dog didn't let go of her foot. He didn't let go of both her feet. (laughs) He was holding on to her feet, and and, and she said something to him about it when she went down. She did. Yep, there's some expletives there. And she kind of dogged him the whole challenges. We noticed two of them, at least. We'll have to go back and watch, but she was behind him. Hurry up! Hurry up! Go! Go, War Dog! She was on his case after that, after he didn't let go of her feet. And he finally said, There was no way for her to land. Don't yell at me. (laughs) All right, so um, Julie ends up pulling it out for for the Kama tribe. She she lands theirs. Well, she was the only one that hadn't. So, yes, I guess she... Does a good job in that regard, yep. At least she was able to do it. Victoria was having a hard time. And it was just hard to watch David and Wentworth and Wardog try to throw the oh, bolos. It, I, it was it was just pathetic to try to look at Wardog throw that. And that he was so bad. I mean, but this any is just guy the that looks like him, you expect he can at least throw a ball or a bag. Yep. I could do better than that, I think. <laughs> I think a lot of people were assessing his abilities in this double episode, and uh, he definitely Oy. definitely comes up short. This is just the beginning of how bad he is. So yeah, he he struggled, and um, and that Victoria finally pulls it out. Pitiful, pitiful. for uh, Manu. So mm. good deal. And good David job, David was terrible. They just were. Lauren was the only one that did anything throwing. I was just like, man, she's showing them up. Probst is tickled uh, with David because he doesn't even have to prompt him. David just goes into a dialogue. of. Hey, There's we're, just no more adjectives, Jeff. We yeah. just have no more adjectives. We're cursed. Jeff. That's it. <laughs> Wentworth went really, really harsh on David after this one, too. She, she had to have been extremely disappointed. She said, David is essentially a girl in the confessional after oh, the yeah. challenge. And and we basically got three girls He's and war dog. He's smaller than I am. Yeah, he weighs less than me. Three girls and war dog. But I think we're going to end up seeing before yeah. it's over mm-hmm. the the dude was Lauren. Is it mainly the <laughs> and yeah. war dog? War dog's right in there. Lauren with the girls. was the only dude. And yeah, it's definitely when it comes to delivering <clears throat> on challenges. But we'll get to more of that. Wow. Yeah, I I really we looked at. I think we looked at that more this time than we. Paid more attention, like because you, you, your mind just kind of says, "Why do they keep losing? They look fit. They be, look like they should win occasionally." They got rid of Reem. They got to get better. They got rid of Keith. They must get better. Okay, it's all on them. They got rid of Chris, so yeah. they get to reap what and they sowed. That's funny. yeah. 
they they didn't get better and it's because these four are like the core of the rotten part of their their challenge performance that's why war dog was so afraid of chris though yes he knew he couldn't beat chris right yeah it's all becoming i don't think he can beat lauren either all all becoming clear yeah he's he's the only one he's got a shot against his david that maybe that's why he was really targeting her (laughs) there we go okay so let's go over to the comma tribe there day 12 they won their pb and j's and julia says we're dominating but but joe's a threat and we gotta focus on our threat we gotta get him out joe knows he's an obvious target and his response is, I got, I'm just going to make it comfortable for him. I'm going to go get food. And you see him out spearing fish, big fish. Nothing like the tiny ones that Chris was bringing back. Well, we know Ron's opinion from the very beginning. He wants Joe out. And so he and Julia and Julie are talking about it. But here's the first time we've seen a change in what he's now saying well, I don't think we can get by without Joe. I love that little montage they did, too. <laughs> the kid they catch showed, fish. They showed him falling down. He can't even walk in the water, much less spear a fish. Yeah, and then, like, we can't catch fish. I think Julie had a basket that she was just uh, swinging at a tree in the hopes that something was going to fall out <laughs> to feed her. I don't know what she was doing. I think Ron was like, we might die out here without Joe. <laughs> we need Joe. I can't yeah. get rid of Joe. I need Joe. <laughs> so... I guess whatever Joe's doing might be working a little bit. Definitely, it worked on Ron to I that thought, degree. Oh, I felt so bad for him when he was, what do you do when you're Joe? Yep. The, even the other tribes are starting to hate on him just because he's Joe and everything looks so easy for Joe. Mm-hmm. And That's to come. And they want that guy out. Yeah. He doesn't deserve to win. He's won everything else. <laughs> so I'm afraid they're really going to go after him hard. Right now, it's working. <sighs> Julie tells us it's a no-brainer, and the merge is going to be too late. So we were wondering, are they going to throw a challenge? Are they going to really go for yeah. it? Yeah, they said if they lose. Yeah, they end up backpedaling a little bit there, didn't they? So back at the uh, Manu camp, Gavin says, man, I'm really hungry today. They get a little taste of food, and it really brings that up, how hungry they really are. Eric's so hungry, he's <laughs> licking the plate. <laughs> Uh, and that was that was I think it was Eric who had said that. So yeah. Well, and Victoria doesn't hesitate to bring up the chickens. Mm-hmm. We got chickens, and uh, except that requires effort, and that doesn't seem true. to be on their agenda. To catch the chickens. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Wendy's still right there. He, she's like for eggs, right? Right. It was good to see Eric coming around a little on Wendy there. She's just so unpredictable. How can you have someone mm. like that? I've got. I would be at the same conclusion as Eric. I would just be really frustrated. And I, I, it's an example of where original Manu really messed up not getting rid of her. At this point, I think Aubrey is too much in her head. I like that. Who are the strategists? i got to find out who they are and what they're thinking. I'm what they're thinking. I liked her characterization that she was like in the survivor girl. waiting room, waiting to get to play, and then that chicken comes across in the front of her frame. They're just taunting them. Yeah, so she's trying to pick out the strategist. Well, and I like that Eric, because we hadn't seen as much of Eric uh, in the last couple of weeks, I don't think. But anyway, Eric's asking Victoria... Who do you want to go to the merge with? Which is always a good thing. And Gavin. Gavin was there also. Instead of telling them, asking. But he was asking her. And uh, Victoria says that she'd rather keep uh, Wendy and get rid of Aubrey. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the plan they hatched at this point? I I thought... I, I guess I thought... I mean, we'd seen some uh, yeah, hint of this prior, so I we talked about it a little bit. I really on believed show. that Aubrey had enough experience she was going to see through it. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, she, so before So just to recap for to folks so end, they know what we're talking about, they posited a plan to have the three girls pretend to bring Wendy in, bring Aubrey in, rather. And get rid of Eric. To make sure she's comfortable and pitch getting rid of Eric. Yes, yeah. and Aubrey was... Totally happy to see that. Victoria was the one she's looking for. She's the strategist. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Aubrey, get out of your head. I was loving Too this much part. In your, I know, but you had Aubrey to go home. I, I did. Didn't. Yes, yes. So when I <laughs> so saw this plan get it. 
plan coming together, and I saw her falling for it. I mean, that was what she this did. Was she bought it all about. Yeah. So Victoria basically she slow played the whole thing and reeled her in. She started to she put the line out. Now she hadn't quite set the hook yet. Yeah, and I was still saying, yeah, but she'll before they go to tribal, she'll notice they're not looking right at her. <laughs> she's gonna notice all those signs she'll pick we up hear. On it. She's Everybody tell us, yeah, 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 yeah. Her experience is gonna kick in, and she's gonna nail them. Okay, so now we go over to Lasso again. Aubrey's characterization of Victoria was that she's sneaky awake. I oh, like I that. guess we're not going to. That's Lesu. okay. Go for it. Uh huh. David asked Dan, hey, hey, let's go fish. Let's go catch some fish. He's just like... I've never fished. I don't no, know anything about fishing. never fished, and I'm not starting now, basically, is what he said. And even when David was out there and he almost had something, David's pitiful at it. But come on, if you're hungry, why wouldn't you at least go try? Maybe the... Maybe if he War Dog had gone out there, it's a foot of water he's standing in, War Dog. Come on. You might get a clam. What if they got a great big old clam or a stingray or something? Anything. Yep. So David tells us he's worried that he's next, and uh, he knows that he needs a hidden immunity idol. I thought, oh, wow, he's going to end up finding one. It just felt, it had that feel to it, so the editors... Uh, you know, had me going at this point. I'm like, and oh. we both had David going so too. David's finally someone's talking about the Lesu Idol, and now David's gonna go find it. So yeah, I won't be able to get a point. You're like, Darn oh it. no, he's gonna, he's gonna. David find tells it. us that he's uh, he's 44 years old, and he's got a two bedroom apartment and some DVDs, and he's trying to. He's been inspired by his first run on Survivor to do more with his life, so he's out hunting well, he for Well, he says he has a girlfriend now too. Mm-hmm. He didn't mention that in the course no, of the well, episode. No, but, but we extra clips. Got that, yeah. Okay, now, at <laughs> the three uh, uh, not Davids were discussing him and how bad that he is in all the challenges. <laughs> challenges yeah. And they should vote David Which out. is a little hypocritical okay. at this point, but well, fair it enough. Is. He, he could very well be the worst of them. I don't know. I'm not, I thought that for sure, but not anymore. Lauren's feeling confident. She knows that she's got War Dog and Kelly on her side. So, And if, she's got if an it, idol. If it comes to that, then she's going to be okay getting rid of David. Yep, and she ne- still hasn't told anybody yet. Good for her. And we had seen in the preview videos heading up to this episode War Dog talking to Wentworth. So this was sort of a repeat for, uh, for those of us who had seen that. And uh, his pitch is that Lauren hurts us. What did you think about how he laid it out? I thought it was stupid because he basically admitted that I'm a fr- I don't trust you completely, and I think you two might try to get me out, and you probably think we might try to get you out. So we should just get Lauren out. Huh? I I thought it was actually well positioned because of the way he presented it. I'm thinking I you two might be thinking this, and then you know, and there, there's this other alternative. So why don't we take out Lauren? She's the one that's going to hurt us. We'd be better for each other going forward. Well, that seemed like a pretty reasonable, in terms of strategy pitch, that seemed I guess from reasonable. a male point of view, maybe. <laughs> okay. But Kelly thought he was being very much like uh, Tony. Yeah. It's not necessarily a, a bad thing to be like a irrational. winner. I don't think she uh, she meant it that way. I think she meant a little all over the place. No, I don't think that's what she I meant at all. I think that's what she meant. That's what I took it to mean. She thinks he's a little all over the place. One hmm. minute he's this and one minute he's that. And uh, he's I don't know where he's, he's coming from. He's always thinking strategy. He's, he's always thinking. That's what I, I took it to mean. I didn't think it was a compliment. Hmm. So all maybe right. we viewed that differently. We did indeed. That's okay. But where did that leave her? She's, as far as she's concerned right now, she's siding with War Dog. It's the best alternative for her. That's why I don't think you're right, because she ends up, she concludes with that. For now, at least, she's siding with War Dog. Well, for right now. I think she says things later on that, you know, shows that maybe she didn't feel well, that way. Things change all over time. Through. Yeah. yeah. That, that's well, why I think you're right. Within tonight's off. episode. So, yeah. It, it but, changes before the end of the show. Okay. But that makes you right. She, she does know <laughs> kill or be killed. 
So that's her philosophy, but I still don't think she's really so ready. At, at this part, to get rid in of the Warren. first of the two episodes, we've been given Joe and Aubrey and David as the primary targets. Yep. So I was feeling good about that. I had Aubrey and David to go. That seemed to be lining up well for me. Well, and I had Wendy and David. All right, let's bounce back out to Edge of Extinction for day 13. Chris finds a box on the beach with a note for each person there. I was a little bit disappointed. I was hoping Chris was just going to find something and run off and get an advantage. But, yeah. But no, they made it fair. Yeah, everybody gets a clue. It's a map and with some text and when the stars align and then Rick, he figures it out. He also blurts it out so everyone knows yeah, that he figured it out. Yeah, what were you thinking, Rick? He wasn't. He wasn't. That's just Obviously. It. But they decide, well, let's cook some rice first, and then we'll go up and we'll we'll find these things. And that little skunk <laughs> snuck <laughs> off. He decided he wanted an advantage to for whatever the advantage might I be. I guess I can admire that as part of the game play, but since it was Keith and it just seemed so... He took his little shell of mm, rice with him. Did you notice that? Uh -uh. <laughs> he was gingerly no, walking along with that. <laughs> So did Reem when they headed out after him, when they finally realized, oh, that little goober, he's run off. But yep. Keith, being as competent as Keith is, gets close, but Chris is able to catch up to him. Well, at least Keith admitted to us, I would have never figured that out. Never. So if Rick had kept his mouth shut, he wouldn't have had to worry about it. He wouldn't him. even have known where to wander to. No. Yeah, but the uh, clues give it away when you fold the map just right. There are two trees. Anyway, Chris gets there just in time. He's able to push Keith out of the way, and he gets the one advantage. Did you recognize that? What's that? What Chris found. Uh-uh. So it was the three bamboo slats and some string. It's classic survivor challenge element, and, and it included a note that said practice. Well, I saw that, but I still don't know what it is. I think, or what, it does. or what it looks like to me, it's a classic uh, challenge where you have to tie the pieces of bamboo together long enough to oh, like get the key. To get the key to get through. To get double. out, yeah. Oh. Like in the Outcast challenge. They did do in that. In Pearl Islands, it, they, they had did. to do that yes. to get the key to get out. And then the first one's out, got mm. back in. Oh, those are so hard. Yeah, to, to tie it so that it's strong enough that it can reach and far enough. enough. Yeah. yeah, because there are limits on the materials that you get. So I, I, that's what it appeared to be to me. I'm not 100% sure that's what it was. I did not what know it what it was. That's why I said, I don't know what it is. Yeah. So that's I thought, what I think. And it fits with the previous Outcast challenge. For well, me. I thought they would show us them practicing. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't worry too much about it in the moment. I thought, ah. I don't know what that is, but, but they'll you don't show see, us. You don't see it again. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. But I thought they would show us them practicing. But... I guess not. We'll see it in the challenge next week. So Chris and Rick split up as they were racing up there to keep Keith from gaining the advantages. And Rick you goes, go to one tree, I'll go to the other. Rick goes to the other, and he ends up with an advantage, and it's an advantage that mm -hmm. they have to send to someone else. It's an extra vote. <sighs> All Reem could say, but that is really disappointing. I am disappointed in him. <laughs> With regards to Keith, yeah, yeah. running off. And Rick, Rick's response, I think it was Rick, well, this is why we voted him out. Yeah, as they were climbing up there. I thought, well, I don't know if that's true or not, but anyway, it would be a good reason to vote him out in future if you happen to be in the game with him again. Sounds good at this point, at least. Yes. Yep. But I like think? that Chris just barreled him out of the way and took it from him, you know? I don't know if 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 he hadn't been that sneaky, if if I would have liked that as much. But because he was so dang sneaky about it and everything, I liked to see him, Chris, just kind of knock him out of the way and okay. take it. Because it was a bit of a bully move, but I thought he kind of earned it. Okay, what else? What did you think about the idea of letting them inject an extra vote in from Edge of Extinction? I did not expect it. Didn't see it coming. So it was a nice surprise. And they've done stuff like that before. But they didn't say where it was coming from. So at this point, even though um, the person that received it didn't know where it came from, I thought, well, then they, it's got to get their brains, you know, churning. Hey, who gave me this? And what's going on? 
So I kind of liked it. What about you? Yeah, I, I, as things go with Edge of Extinction, I thought that was a good idea that they had. A nice twist. To allow someone on the edge to be able to have an impact on the game potentially. What I, you don't know how it's going to play out. What I but, uh, didn't realize was that it would have to be used. They would have to give it to whoever went to tribal that night. Mm-hmm. But obviously they did because I can't see him wanting to send it to someone on that particular tribe. He would have sent it to David if he could have sent it to a tribe that wasn't going to uh, tribal council. That was my first thought. It's like, oh, no, he's going to be able to protect David. One of my vote-out choices. <laughs> this isn't good. <laughs> Okay, off to the first of two immunity challenges for the evening. So they've got to dive down. Someone's got to dive down and get puzzle pieces. They got two different sets, two two pieces of the puzzle that they have to dive down and release. There's like a handle that they have to pull out to release the puzzle pieces, and they're connected together. It's like buoys that are glued together. The only thing that would have made Lesu worse was if Keith had been with them. <laughs> yeah, and they'd had to take care of him too, you mean, in terms yes. of because of the water elements? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, and there's no way he could have gone down. So, yeah, and fortunately not everybody has to dive down. Uh, Julie and Victoria end up sitting this one out. Eric, Aurora, and Kelly end up going out first to dive down. Eric, he just did this perfect. He did it all. Uh, he's... He's what Chris w- wishes he was, I think, in terms of providing some competition for Joe. But for Eric, Joe. Eric did a great run and dive off the high platform, and he was able on that one. It looked like on the one breath from the dive, he was yeah, able to go to down go and, all the way down and release it. Aurora, not so much. Well, that's the easiest way. I'm Although sure she, that's why they had him some go, height. Yeah, yeah, that the that ladder. I mean, Instead that ramp. Instead of they like had to climb up. David, who uh, jumped off and went to hold his nose, even Ron jumped off, didn't he? Kelly, uh, Kelly, definitely, who goes in the first group, jumped off. She was holding her mask with one hand and her nose with the other. But she always holds her nose. <laughs> she, Even when she jumps from the ship or anything. She, she was her. having such a hard time. It was comical. She was trying to... Even when she finally got over there, because she didn't dive the way Joe... I mean, uh, Eric and Aurora did. So she didn't She didn't get there quickly. But when she finally got over to where she needed to dive down in the water to pull the, the uh, pin to release the puzzle pieces, uh, she was hitting herself in the face with the mask. And I've done that before, too, where you, you grab the mask and you go to reseat it. And, and she let go of it. You can see her smack herself in the face twice <laughs> with the mask. And then, of course, she breathes into it and fogs it up. It's, yeah, it's just a disaster for her. She completely wore herself out. And she's a struggle swimmer, so it was taking her energy just to get over there. It's I don't like going under the water with the mask. Bad, bad time. You know, like go down. Suit. because. Uh-huh. Because uh, because of that, it can fill up. Eric and Aurora didn't even bother. They just didn't even fool with it. They just dove. And, mm-hmm. you know, they opened That's their eyes underwater. That's what I would have done. I wouldn't and, have done a mask. Yeah. So uh, Eric did fantastic. Wentworth gives up. Lauren comes out. <laughs> She's soon to give up, too. Uh, Julia ends up going in for comma. And uh, she did great. She ends up releasing the puzzle piece there. Manu ends up getting theirs out first. Uh, of those first two puzzle pieces, the other two puzzle pieces are waiting for them up on the floating platform for them to assemble a three-dimensional uh, puzzle. We've seen these before. Pretty challenging to visualize. Well, and I'm sure Lesu just loves it when they hear Jeff saying, that, oh, they're still trying to get two puzzle pieces, and this could be a blowout. Yeah, So Lauren gives up. They have no pieces. So now Kelly and Lauren are laying on on the first platform, having achieved nothing. War Dog tries. He fails. (laughs) David goes in. He fails. (laughs) Well, at least War Dog finally got one, and then Lauren got the other one. Propes tells us when David went in that David struggles in the ocean. (laughs) It's just a struggle. I don't know that Kelly's a lot better, though. I think he's cutting Wentworth some slack. Yeah. He is, but I don't know why, because she is not good in the water. I mean, that's obvious this time. I never really noticed it so much before. How bad but, she was, yeah. But she is not good in the water either, so 
which for a third time player seems odd to me, but we oh, will. Yeah. David so, Bells, Lauren goes back and gets it. Meanwhile, the other two tribes are busy working on the puzzle. Well, and at this point, you do think it's going to be a blowout. There's no way they can get. And then all of a sudden, they're neck and neck. Yeah. Like who's in. doing the puzzle, and they've got as much chance as anybody. Looked like Joe and Julia were really doing a good job on their puzzle. They were working together well on that puzzle, and Ju- and they got most of it. And then Joe was like, oh, and he just leans a piece up there yeah. and calls ropes over. It's like, she was Holy. she was telling, uh, Julia was telling him, bring it around to the other side, which it, it looked like it would. Either, yeah. And Joe just saw it. You could tell he just saw it in his head, and he just kind of laid it there and went, well, it'll work from this I side, too. It. Yeah, because it was basically just laying it up there. We're trying to make it, it fit over there, but it really fits just yeah. right here. <laughs> and uh, and they win first place. So Lesu does finally get up there, and now it's a race between Manu and Lesu. And you can see Aurora calls out to Aubrey, tries to give her a tip to help her on how to solve it. You need four down at the bottom. And um, now, because Lesu was able to hear that too, I think they started, that helped them. Uh, when they were all looking at theirs to see how they were positioned. That's the thing, when it's together, you don't necessarily get a clue because of the way that the the pieces fit next to each other. And because they're all, they all look like balls, spheres, it's not necessarily obvious which... No, I hate those. I'm four, not good at those. Which of the four pieces is where when you, you're uh, a distance away from them. Okay, now this is what, day 14? I believe so, yeah. First win for them? Yeah. On any tribe they've been on for these four, their first win? Oh, no, this is 13, sorry. Okay. It was a two-day, 12 and 13. Okay. Yep, but yeah, day 13, first time that Dan, David, Kelly, and Lauren had tasted Mm. the, the immunity victory, and they finally do pull it out, yeah. And then Kelly was, oh, the comeback kids, baby. And I thought, well, I wouldn't jump to that conclusion, but enjoy your victory because they had to have thought they were done for. So that made it even sweeter when they pulled it out. Yeah. But we thought David would still have a chance that he might be able to see that kind of puzzle if, if they could get up there. Yeah, it's not clear that that did it, that it was his skills, Mm-mm. or if it was mainly Aurora's tip that really helped him get there. Aurora's tip? Mm-hmm. What did she say? She called out. We've already covered this. She called out to Aubrey to tell her what the base needed to look like to solve it. Uh, okay. Basically, at this point, it's you said it's coming. To, it's come down to when when Mono lo, Mono loses, and they're going. It's who's it going to be? Me or you? Who gets a vote out point yeah. this time? Right? Yeah. We got. Oh, this is fun because either I get a point or you get a point. You get a point for Wendy or I get have, one for Aubrey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we figured it's going to be one of those two, and uh, and so it made it just a little extra fun for mm-hmm. us to. Yep. And, uh, we're going back and forth at each other <laughs> as we're back at the Manu camp. There. But I was gracious when you won and said, congrats. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think you might have been planning ahead so you could say no. that. No, podcast. I didn't. I, I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't think about that. <laughs> that doesn't concern me. But I made sure because we were being so competitive that I congratulated you on your uh-huh. life. Aubrey says she knows the drill. So you got the four original comma coming together here versus Wendy. So Aubrey, this is perfect. Victoria just so had Aubrey's number. She sits down, spends time with her. Yeah, let's let's weigh the pros and cons of Eric versus Wendy. She's and we need Wendy for this. We're gonna need her, but let's weigh this back and forth. And you know, Eric's gonna be a threat at the merge. And if you wondered if maybe somehow Wendy harbored some sense of how to play the game, this little exchange between <laughs> Wendy, Aubrey, and Victoria should yeah. settle that matter clearly for you in that she <laughs> she just ends up frustrating Aubrey. So how am I supposed yeah. to work with her when she won't commit? She won't she won't give she you She won't anything. give an opinion. Yeah. And just says she can't say. So it's you struggling. Know. You're we're left wondering, did did Victoria really sell it? Is Did she set the hook on Aubrey? And um, it's not clear, which is great. So good job on the edit there. But there's I'm holding out hope. And then we find out that Aubrey 
got the extra vote from Rick. Well, and I was thinking, hey, if Wendy can't commit, then she goes. It's easy. Mm-hmm. Send Wendy home. Give right. me a point. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you had your plan for your point. I had That's my right. plan for my point. Yep. So Aubrey's got an extra vote, and we learned that the last time. So this is good. It's not one of those only good for right now. So she could hold it all the way up until seven in the I game. I was disappointed. And though. hold on just a second. And the other aspect of it is that it, it'll it extend through the tie and the revote mm. if it were to come to that. So all the way down the final seven and extends through tie and revote. That was a very powerful advantage to get in the way of an extra vote. They juiced it up. Okay. You were disappointed? I was disappointed that it did last because uh, I wanted her to be able to use it. And why did you want her to be so able I to use it? So I could get a point. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because it was really down with, between me and you. It wasn't about Aubrey or Wendy. Well, no. It was about, you know, whether <laughs> I got a point or you did. Yes. No, All it wasn't right. even the fantasy league. It was me and you, babe. Aubrey is struggling she tells us because she's never had power in the game before now she's got two elements of power she's got the hidden immunity idol and she's got that an extra was interesting advantage. yeah i like that, that she insight. admitted that well i've never been in this position I only know and i don't know what to do with it when i'm struggling from the bottom yeah and i thought oh my gosh no no she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna read through this i mean I, she just gonna... I'll, I'll admit i was with you there i, I was like no way she's really not gonna go in and, and no blow at this, least play right? your idol they're just setting us up they're just setting us up yeah, that's what i'm thinking us up. okay let's go to tribal council there on night 13 everyone but wendy has to get fired because they hadn't been to tribal council before <laughs> oh yeah when asked gavin says that the mood back at camp was relaxed Liar, liar, pants on fire. I don't know. I think it might have been a little relaxed. No, I think that was... Because he was in on it. I think they were... I know, but I think they were playing a role for Aubrey. Sure. And that was all part of the role. Make oh, her no, the four of was us. Relaxed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, but I don't think he... Aubrey, every, says that. everyone talked. Yeah, sure. And, and Tori then, says it was a conversation. I think they were using Aubrey words, too. Oh, the there was a lot of talking, Aubrey said. Yeah, and uh, Victoria sides with Aubrey. Well, she's correct. And I sure hope everybody didn't get into their own heads. Wendy gives you a little more insight to how she's been approaching the game. And she says, when she responds to one of Jeff's questions, said that she's just happy she made it here. And she she knows that she's an obvious choice and that everyone's confused by her gameplay. Yep, and I made it to here. So even if it's snuffed, I'm happy. I thought, well, okay then. Yeah, make it easy. <laughs> yeah. You were hopeful. That's what I thought. Well, well, if you're okay with making it to here. Now, the then... next thing that Aubrey said gave me a spark. I thought, uh-oh, I think it is coming. Because Aubrey's mm-hmm. talking about how things are dynamic and that she's been making game-level connections and that she believes she's found her black cat or, correction, black cats to her witch. So she's thought, basically... Aubrey. She's Aubrey. viewing them all as familiars, and she's mm-hmm. the witch. So like, Aubrey, don't, 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 Aubrey. Mm-hmm. Too late. <laughs> I mean, I would have gotten a point, but at this point, I just, I hated to see such a... They did such a good job. <sighs> Gavin chiming in. Yeah, returning players, they've got that experience. I thought you're a third-time Value. player. You have to live with this <laughs> decision. <laughs> And then Wendy gives us a little more insight that she says, well, well, first, Aubrey's really nice, so it's hard to to fathom going well, after Aubrey. But then she says that she's been having trouble separating the game and life, which, yes, we've all been able to observe. Well, the, Gavin was doing a good job. Fantastic. You know, yeah. Aubrey is someone I can trust down the road. I don't see her as a returning player. She's a benefit to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see us four going uphill, but Wendy, now she's already been going downhill. And I it, that, I thought, oh my gosh, they're just roping her right in. Yeah. It was, and she's it was a buying little master it. class of right here of how to do that with a returning player. Just mm, definitely. And Eric, you know, chiming in too. Oh, yeah. We trust you. Forged in fire tonight. We Absolutely. totally trust you. And here's the thing. Now, 
people that have played before always tell us, oh, when people are going to vote you out, they won't make eye contact with you. There's all these things. These guys did not do that. You contrast them with Ron, right? Uh, And and his, even though it seemed to work a bit on Joe, but his, you know, in the, what we get to see from the camera and in his facial features and his posture and how he interacted versus how they handled Aubrey. Somehow they were able, and these are the same people that were struggling to interact with Aubrey earlier that Mm -hmm. we saw them not coming off too well when they had the confidence of the six strong vote against Aubrey and Joe and Aurora. Well, this is when I thought they had her. Way better. I can be an overthinker, but it can be just as simple as it seems. From Aubrey, yeah. Because I'm such an overthinker. So I'm just going to accept it at face value. No. Time time to check for hidden immunity idols. Are we going to get one? No. Nope. No idol played. So we get one vote for Wendy, and then, boom, Aubrey's gone. Aubrey, Aubrey, Aubrey. She managed it well. You guys are unbelievable players. Good luck, guys. She really was shocked. Yes. She just did not see that coming. Yeah, they totally But she was very good, one good on sport. Her. Good luck, guys. Kill it, you know. Got some smug smiles once she was gone. They didn't gloat while she was there, but there was definitely some well celebratory smiling have to going on there. Swallow those next week. When Aubrey's presented with the edge of extinction decision, she said that's a no brainer. Boom. She grabs a torch and she's off, off to the island. She goes. And mm-hmm. she's the one that brought up this is a JT style embarrassment. Yeah, the so next that, day. Oh yeah. So it's mm. day fourteen. She's at the edge of extinction, and she's just she's there lamenting with a bunch of angry people. Her bad choice. But she says, on the plus side, I'm rock bottom, and that's where that's I like to play. That's where I thrive, <laughs> pulling myself up from. That's what uh-huh. I'm used to. Yeah. I thought, gee, Aubrey, but it, you can't get on top and stay. On top, if you don't know how to play at the top. So, question. What? Does she still have an idol? A hidden immunity idol? Does she still have an yeah. advantage? Good till seven? I would think so. I think so, too. I think it's still there. But, here's what I want to know. If she doesn't make it back in, either time. Because I, I can't wait to hear. I'm assuming that. Those people that don't win their way, that only one person wins their way back in. The rest the merge, are yeah. are offered to go back to extinction. That's our understanding. Or they can go out of the game. Sure, because you can leave it any Because they point. can do that anytime. And uh, that they will be told at that time there may be another opportunity to get back. You'd have to assume that. Yeah. So... <laughs> Would uh, with reasonable uh, confidence, yeah. I would assume Aubrey wouldn't give up, even if she didn't win her back, way back in. Why would she give anything away while there was still an opportunity? Right. But if she went out there again and lost again, would she have an opportunity to give someone the idol and the uh, if it's still well, uh, if it's final five, final seven. Yeah, I think it's final five when they have the opportunity mm, to come okay. back in the second Cause time. Because that's no good after final seven. Right. So, the, okay, then the question is posed, but they probably won't tell them that they will have another opportunity at final five. Yeah, they're not going to cover that no. right now because they so, the uncertainty is part of the challenge. Would they even allow her to give it away? All right, so it's day 14 now, and we're at the second reward challenge, and folks are shocked to see that Aubrey is gone. Well, Joe and David especially. Joe says, comma, is not so strong. Not so comma strong now, are we? Yep. Nope. Okay, so they got some obstacles they got to go over, some Probes call them table obstacles because they got to go over and slide over the top of them. And then they've got to drop a lever and then collect sandbags, and then they use those, they throw the sandbags at two targets, uh, which spin when you hit them, and then uh, if they spin to a certain point, it drops a flag. So there are two flags each tribe's got to drop. Yeah, and they... What's they, the reward? Coffee, tea, or pastries. Yeah. And pastries. Sugar bomb. Sugar bomb. Yeah, that's not as good as the PB&J to me. Right, because you were getting some... Some protein with the peanut butter, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. But they may still have 
PB and J. But day fourteen, yeah, some coffee be sounding awfully mm-hmm. good. Second place, you get some coffee, iced coffee and cookies. So. I don't even like iced coffee, but I bet you I'd drink it. Yeah, at that point, I'm sure you would. <laughs> it, uh, anything that's that has any flavor to it at all is better than whatever they've had or not had. Rice and water. Anything. Yeah. So. Yep, it's certainly a step up and improvement. Okay, Aurora sits out for this one for comma since they've got an extra person. Alrighty, and they got to get all those sandbags put in the bin before they can do any throwing. So now this challenge, this one's designed for Joe, in terms of he could carry the whole tribe on his back here. Yep. They just got to get there and get the sandbags, and sure enough, comma tribes the first two get all their sandbags. Yep, and, and first throwing. to throw. I was surprised at how well Gavin did, though. So Manu gets there shortly afterwards, and Gavin starts getting hits in, too. Yep, yep. So he he stayed close with Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know why they even rushed with Lesu throwing or... War Dog. Pretending to throw. Man, Dan. Dan the War Dog. Such a huge disappointment. He manages to hit the paddle... And spin it the wrong way. So he actually locked it down <laughs> harder instead of loosening it for the flag to drop. I don't think he even knew. He had no, so much he had trouble. No he shouldn't have been able to get over that wall. I think it fell by accident. The way he dropped that ball, he didn't get. He was oh, supposed when to he was, yeah, so pull they, that to make the wall drop. After they, yeah, they have to get the, oh, uh, release the goodness. monkey's fist, throw the monkey's fist and hook it to drop the, the wall so they can proceed. Another obstacle in that sense. And he seemed so confused and out by the of it. whole thing he he didn't have any sense of what he was doing and, and no wonder up, she yelled at him all the time yeah when he got up there to throw he <laughs> the guy can't throw not only can he not fish <laughs> but he can't throw either oh goodness wasn't he in the military yeah i wonder what they what did how did he throw grenades when they were doing training i don't i guess maybe he could lob them okay but Precision throwing. Well, I would be sick that day for definitely sure. Definitely not his thing. No, yeah, he, he doesn't. Throwing. He didn't know how to do an overhand throw. When you see um, someone throw with their left hand, that's what he looked like with his dominant hand. <laughs> he was awful. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, let's. Lauren let's at least got up there along. and started hitting it. So yeah. To her credit, so yeah, I think Lauren's the dude, and War Dog and David and Kelly are the chicks and. The Lesu tribe, so at least as far as physicality, yeah, that seems to be what they the, offer in the the way it the is. Challenges. Yeah. And Kelly is so mad. Those other tribes have had two weeks of vacation, while Joey, amazing, just carries all of them, and on his shoulders. <sighs> yeah. And David would love to be that guy. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to be him? What's it like to be that guy? <laughs> yeah. And I, he does make it look simple. Yes. You know he works hard. And Joe works hard at keeping his body in shape and uh, in balance, mm-hmm. you know, on, on different levels with the yoga, meditation, those kinds of things. So, you know, it's not that he doesn't work at keeping himself at that level, but, you know, he does just make it seem so easy. Okay, we're at the comma camp there on uh, day 14 and they celebrating celebrating once again comma strong julie tells us it's just hard to imagine losing when they've got joe yeah we just expect to win the challenges <laughs> and she's really adamant about getting him to acknowledge that she's offering praise and appreciation for him she's but, not going to let him uh let it slide but here's what i didn't particularly like is she in her mind thinks she's Pulling the wool over his eyes. Which is what she says he does, in her confessional. Yeah, yeah. that he doesn't, uh, he doesn't get. Perceive, yeah. That she is really against him mm-hmm. and that she'll vote him off at the first opportunity. And I thought that's why I would like to see her go first. Okay. So. You uh, want some I'm, comeuppance for that kind of approach, huh? I guess. Even or- though I understand it and... I don't disagree that they shouldn't get rid of a, a good player like that, but I'm still cheering for Joe. Mm-hmm. Well, you're about to have some more reason to cheer for Joe. Aurora says that it broke her heart a little to see that Aubrey had been voted out, and then we cut to Joe, and 
he starts talking about how hard it is to Aww. lose Aubrey. And it's clear now that there really was no place for him to hide. No, and that they they do want the returnees out. And he's hurting. It's time to cry a little. And no one to rely on. Why is he crying? Because he's thinking about how blessed he is at home. And how much... So he takes the negative of that moment and the fact that he realizes that he's alone and he's, he's, you know, Aubrey's gone now. He doesn't have her. So that plan's done for. There's no one here he can really trust. But what it really makes clear for him is the value that he has back at home for all those Mm -hmm. people that do provide that. And he questioned himself, how adaptable am I? Can I adapt? Can I find options? You know, where do I go from here? And probably it might have, I forget whether it was Aurora or Julie or somebody, when he was throwing, do it for Sierra. That was Aurora. Yeah. Which is his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that might have brought up home, too. Oh, that could have been a trigger, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, so she might have meant it as encouragement, but it could have. It might uh, have almost pulled him out of the an moment. Emotional, emotional I response. Think I would say that in the middle of the challenge, yeah. but but it could have been part of what Helped you know brought up the that, emotions. Yeah, yeah, losing Aubrey yeah. and then helping the uh, remind the, him about his loved one at home. Finding the positive side of it too, like you said, right? How can mm-hmm. I adapt? And so we get a great little bounce rebound oh, yeah. moment here with joe reaching out to julia and loved it he's flattering her you're super smart you're beautiful you're great at challenges you're a med student and you're doing good and yeah they're gonna hold and your success you're have a target on against your you say no don't say that <laughs> yeah but he followed that up by saying so we have to stay together because we've won so many of these challenges we've got so much of the food they're all going to be out for all five of us it's not going to just be me they're going to be out for all of us they're going to see but if i can win for us and we can see which way to go so i thought you go joe good job uh sound like joya was really thinking about it he got in her head a little bit he did get in her head from what we got i guess yeah yeah she's like no i don't want people to see me (laughs) okay cut back over to the lesu camp and uh, that's where david was saying that what's it like to be joy amazing can you imagine what that's like well obviously he can't and i couldn't either so okay so for me this was a contrast because they cut next to lauren and she's upset about losing and she tells us i never cry she's she's there on a crappy beach they're sleeping in the mud and this just seemed like can't eat the rice yeah and she can't eat it it just you contrast the moment she's having with how of joe's and i thought joe seemed way more authentic and i couldn't help but think that's just like an instagram cry you're crying to have a drama moment for your instagram feed that's what this feels like because that that voice that she made when she was supposedly (laughs) crying didn't believe it at all it was more a why a whine and a cry yeah okay (laughs) but still i don't know i thought it was kind of cute because she because i felt like she felt it that it i thought she she was feeling it the Hmm. frustration and the oh this is just awful but i don't i didn't feel like she was giving up at all Mm -hmm. in any way but she was just reacting to the emotion and the fact that I'm someone out here that I'm not at home. I <laughs> never cry. And I have cried four days in a row. Yeah. That is not me. Maybe maybe Who it is was. this person? I, I don't know. I took She's it She's definitely serious. physically struggling. It just seemed fake to me, so... I, I saw it more as pander into the camera, but I understand no, what you're saying. No, I didn't. I, I, I didn't think so. It's something about her voice. It just seemed fake. Well, it was kind of a why, yeah. but, <laughs> but uh, anyway, you hate that kind of thing anyway. Lauren's confiding in War Dog, and she's telling him that she was blacking out when she was walking down the, the beach and that she can't eat, and, of course, that's really not good to, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> to be, share um, with War Dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yet, David's still searching for food. Finds a big Nobody's clam. Nobody's helping this him. This is actually where he found the clam, but 
Well, he didn't get it, though. He didn't seem to be able to retrieve it, and no one came to his aid to help him do that. I would have gotten something. You need a pry stick at that point. You need something to help you pry it loose. And, yeah, he's struggling well, trying somebody, to fish. Well, something like maybe war dog. It's like, why, if, you, if somebody's got food cornered, why wouldn't you do whatever you could to try to get some food in your belly? Well, as David and Kelly and Lauren start lamenting, it turns out War Dog hasn't actually been doing much at camp, so. Yeah, that's what David, he doesn't do anything around camp. He isn't, it's like, oh, why well, I knew I hadn't seen him do anything, except maybe go to the water well, but that was usually to talk so, to somebody, but. Lauren's confession shakes War Dog a little bit, so he goes and talks to Kelly and says, "You know what? We need we need David because <laughs> Lauren's wasting away, and so we got to make a plan." And of course, David agrees and he even says out loud, "What choice do I have?" Well, and I think Kelly's still playing both sides, though. She's pulling in David and Lauren so that, and because she's telling him, "I just go along with him." She's making good. I just go along with it. She's making good on her statement of having plan A, B, and C. You yes. can see all three of yes. them at, at work, yeah, and through these episodes. I do appreciate that gameplay. So she's keeping her options open. So they agree with him, and as soon as War Dog's gone, Kelly and David have a conversation that certainly was enlightening but a bit shocking too right because they they can agree on the fact that it's a war dog dictatorship he doesn't actually ever listen he just tells them things and david tells us he does nothing and wentworth and he's even david surprised that he's now aligned with wentworth <laughs> he said so boy i spent the whole first part of the game trying to get her out and now all of a sudden I'm aligned with her and I, I didn't see that kind of like it in this cycle. I don't know about yeah. kind of like it, but I I think he felt like it was a viable option. Well, sure. Whereas he did not before. He's not irrational. Because well, I know that he was in the beginning. He's not often in thinking confident. that I've got to get her before she gets me. <laughs> she's after me. I know she's after me. No, she wasn't. Right. Well, he was wrong. I don't know that that was irrational. It was rational to uh, think that might be a possibility. Given his, you know, his perspective on the world, the filter he sees the world in. Yeah. And not that she wouldn't have taken him out had the right opportunity presented itself. But he definitely was actively trying to get her out. All right. Yeah, fortunately for him, she never found out. Otherwise, this current option might not have been on the table for him. Yep. It's time for our second visit to Edge of Extinction here in the second episode. It's day 16, so I think we skipped day 15. That's why you were thinking that maybe they were both yeah. two-day cycles. I don't think we got anything on 15. So they get uh, more information. Five new maps show up. Keith makes no promises that he won't run off with the information and try to find an advantage again. Well, at least you know that up front. Aubrey's telling us she's just following along. She's not clear what's going on, but... These folks seem to know how to read these maps, so she's going to tag along. Yep. She's doing what they do, and Rick, nobody's bothering to explain anything to her, but Rick, why would they? Yeah, why would they, yeah. Rick didn't, uh, he didn't figure it out like he did the last one. and uh, He said this one was harder. Right, but he did eventually, it dawned on him that the holes lined up in this map instead of the edges with arrows pointing to things, and so he thinks whatever the advantage is is down by the mast. Yeah, it took him basically back to the beach, but he interpreted it as at the mast, mm -hmm. and he should dig there. And he did, quite profusely, but he did not find anything. No, he did not. So I, I like that Reem picked up on this, and she, she thought, oh, well, maybe low tide, maybe it's not there, maybe it's over here. You know, when the tide goes out. Yeah. But then she makes, like, one of the greatest blunders of the whole season, I would... Yeah. I gotta believe, really right? really kind of stupid. What's and that over there? She points at something she sees what in the that? water, and Keith runs over and gets it. Well, of course. Why and she's he? probably used to having him do things like that. Yeah, so. exactly. But it's like... uh I would have. She was right did? behind him because you could just see her hand. Right beside him. Well, why didn't she just knock him over into the water like Christy <laughs> <laughs> and said, "Hey, I saw that first, and this is mine." She had the presence of mind to see it. She didn't have the presence of mind to keep it to herself. And okay, but once she saw him move toward it, I believe if she had yelled, 
and threatened him enough. I'm gonna drag you out in the He's deep water. He's young enough. Yeah, <laughs> I will drag you out into an island. I think she could, if she'd have brought out the mother voice. Mm-hmm. I think she could have stopped. At least him giving him pause, track. so she could catch up. Yeah, but she didn't, and Keith gets an advantage, and it's a. <sighs> It's a whole new kind of advantage in the sense that he's going to be able to penalize someone at a challenge. So it doesn't give him an advantage in the challenge like he gets to go ahead uh, a section in the challenge like we've seen before. It's to make it harder for someone else. I don't think we've seen something like that before. Do you recall Mm -hmm. that? I I can't right now think of anything like that before, but uh, maybe there was. In any case, uh, it's easy Easy decision for Keith. He says he's going to yeah, put that on yeah, Chris. No problem. Chris gets this. Yeah, after getting hip checked for the previous one, he's he's all about some payback for Chris. Well, and especially, I thought, yep, this is the same guy that uh, that said he'd be loyal to the end to, to you. To Chris, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. out to get you now. Well, that was before Chris voted him out. The well, kind of true. it's all off. All bets are off. When well, you sure, but do that. So, so. Uh, and now then, rain blows up. Let's talk for a little minute oh, about this before we go to the immunity we? challenge. Yeah. So Chris t- says, I can't believe you gave it away like that. I kept going, Chris, shut up and walk away. She's just escalating. The, you, nothing you say now so will me, mean anything. Let me check in with you. Did she give okay. it away? Yes, of course she did. Absolutely. She gave it away. And that's what's going to make her even that much matter. She knows that. <laughs> she knows she wouldn't she gave acknowledge it, away. it on some level. But, right? but she's she, ready to throw fists. She's fist getting to up. She's uh she's gonna throw hands. She's she's getting up and stomping she over and throw hands in, on Chris. In his direction. Well, she made like she was. She's I coming know, but when someone comes at you like that, that's what that posturing. means. I think it was posturing too. I agree with you in that regard. But it and I'm part of me's not surprised to see dude bro Reem doing crap like that well and because she knows that that young man is not gonna touch her right and certainly not on television and that she can get away with you know going off on on some level she knows she was a dumb dumb and she gave away she interpreted what he was saying as she gave it away something that she had and that's not what happened she didn't get something and give it away. But that seems to be how she is interpreting what he's saying. It's like you gave away that there was something there. You did do that. But she's like, I didn't give it. I never had my hands on it. I did not give it to him. Mm-hmm. So I, I see her point, but she was already out of control. Let's face it. Yeah. She was already on the edge. She's really been on the edge. <laughs> She's been there the longest, and she's the furthest out on that edge. I want to come back to that at the end. Okay. All right, so moving on. We'll get away from Reem's ugly moment. Let's go to the immunity challenge. No, you have to say what Aubrey said about this dysfunctional family. Okay. How about you say that? I just did. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Immunity challenge? Okay. Kama sits out Ron on this one, and there is... Jeff drops the bomb. Yeah. Only going to be one winner here. Yeah. And the other I immediately two thought, tribes oh, wow, going we're going to get a trial. triple vote out. I know you said that, and I thought, no, they can't do gonna that. We're going to lose two in the second episode here. But then he clarified it later. No, you vote out. All right, so they got to climb a ladder, and then they've got to uh, move, start moving a bag along a, a rope. And, of course, it's wrapped around multiple oh, yeah. beams up there. And uh, they got to move it through. I really like how Aurora stayed right with Joe and helped Mm -hmm. with that. As he was moving it forward, she was lifting the rope, manipulating the rope, moving it. And the two of them together really kept that going. So I thought, oh, she was very helpful in that. Yep. And they were working. We've we've observed in these two episodes tonight that Joe has worked really well. With both Julia and Aurora. Yep, definitely. Some good teamwork going on there Mm -hmm. for sure. All right, so they get out with that bag, and then they've got to... um, That's where the monkey fist is, actually, right? And uh, that's when they do their release to release that uh, cage. 
Oh yeah. When war- I got we ahead, were talk- didn't I? Yeah, we were talking about it earlier, but mm, it's just okay. because it's another goof. By the time War Dog finally gets there, he's having a hard, hard time. So we've combined the two, I think. But yeah, that's that okay. happens when yeah. there's so many challenges in one. Yeah. In in two hours. Yep. Good stuff. Our brains mix he's, them up. He's having a really hard time. Yeah. Mm. And then there's a slide puzzle that they have to solve at the end once they get there. And, of course, we know Joey Amazing and and Julia. Julia was, was helping, but uh, Julie dropped out and let Joe. Joe didn't yeah. start out Right. At first, it was, it was Julie and uh, Julia working on it, and then Julie tapped out, and Joe came in. Joe keeps had, uh, trying to let the other people take the lead and and not always have to go to the rescue but it was fun to watch david on this one because he was just sure he was close to solving it when they finally got up there and had a chance <laughs> he you wasn't can hear him, close hear him talking to kelly yeah, he's like yeah, are you ready because we're about there here it comes he says <laughs> it's like you weren't close david yeah <laughs> if you go back and look i think you know, it was pause it and look at it, it it's victoria not victoria and eric were working on it for Manu, they must have had really nothing because they don't even they show didn't them. even show yeah, them at all. It wasn't interesting when Joe stepped in and he and Julia got their rhythm going. They just blew through it and comma wins again. Yeah, I don't think anyone was close to them at all. That's they, when that's when we find out that both tribes will be going to tribal council, but only one person will be voted out. So Lesu and Manu are headed to tribal. David tells us, strap in for fun. So he's better. <laughs> he, he's doing good as a narrator now. He's throwing little lines out there like that that editors can use. Well, he's learned what they want. He is in the business, isn't he? He's a, he's writer, a writer, TV writer. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> well, he wasn't, I don't think he's, he, it's not something he's always good at. I'll just put it no, that No, but I think once he's been on the show and sees... He views it differently now. It's a different David, for sure. Right. Yeah, you, you can yes. see some growth and everything, and he oh, wants more out of, of growth. Yeah. He wants more out of the experience and more out of life now, which is great to see on his behalf. Okay, so we're back at uh, Manu there on day 16, and Eric's lamenting that horrible challenge, and uh, this is when we first see them agree that it's very likely to go to a four four tie and we gotta be ready to draw rocks and so yeah, let's and do that. And checking but checking in with everybody to together. make sure they're willing to do that. Yeah, and Wendy says, Oh, you know, we can probably sway David because he was on the outside when I was there before. Which so. means no, I may not draw rocks. So <laughs> may not have to if they can pull David in, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not sure that Wendy ever committed. We didn't see her say absolutely yeah, I'll draw rocks. I don't know if she would or not. The other people said, oh, yeah, we'll do it. But they also came up with all kinds of uh, other plans in case it really came right down to it. I I think both tribes thought they could bluff the other tribe to get them to, and they both tried. Yeah, we get to see Eric and Gavin talking after they had made the first overall plan to stick together and draw rocks, and they were just solidifying. They're both on the same page. Yep, we need each other. Let's do this. And... Uh, Gavin's, you know, he's got his trust in Victoria, and Gavin and Victoria are having a conversation. Yep, they're together. And then Victoria informs us in her confessional that, well, you really shouldn't trust me. <laughs> you may yep. not have figured it I out yet. I will betray an alliance to further my I, game. I am open anytime. to moving further in the game. So, all right, so she's for sure a wild card. Wendy's always going to be a wild card. I wonder why Kelly is trying to encourage a Victoria vote. Uh, in, oh, in terms of the target, was, right? Oh, I, I know who now why I don't <laughs> remember because he interrupted her as she was trying to explain that they wouldn't expect. <laughs> At which point, War Dog says, we should target Wendy and just Let's talk. do it my way. Yeah. Shut up, Kelly. We don't want to hear your stupid ideas. What was interesting about just that exchange was that she comes back around <laughs> and she goes, you know what? He's right. But he was a jerk about it. The way he, the way he yeah. manages those conversations, and he actually like doesn't he should listen. Have at least let me finish with my idea. Lauren tells us that she's just got to make the merge. She needs that that merge food. I wonder why she thinks she's going to be able to eat the merge food when she can't eat like Rice. bland 
white rice, which is what they give people when they can't eat. Yeah. They're coming off of not eating and uh, she's just fooled herself into thinking that. Maybe she's got some kind of gluten issues or something and she can't. But mm. I don't know. But or maybe it's just there's certain things if I ate too much of it I can't I can't stomach it. You I, know me. I can't imagine they've like, had too much nope, of it. Can't yet. have another bite of that. Yeah. War Dog, not unlike Victoria, tells us that, yeah, he's not really interested in drawing rocks for Lauren. So he's got to go find an idol. <laughs> but he made it so obvious that he was gone off to look for an idol yep. when he hadn't got up and hardly moved David from whatever spot he was sitting in. Tried to talk him into helping get some food again, but he just blew David off and went off idol hunting. He sat on the beach for a minute and crunched numbers and then got up and ran hunting for the idol so now they realize he's doing that so they're all hunting for the idol yep yep they didn't want him to have it and lo and behold who finds the idol lauren because she knew what to look for and david because he was looking longer <laughs> no. no no it ends up being wentworth this time she spots it Right beside, she's standing there with War yeah, Dog like, talking. Oh, gee, thanks for walking over here. I may never have looked there. Yeah, it led me right and, to uh, it. And yeah, I liked that she kept her cool. Yep. And Got it uh, yeah, him yeah, let's do go look somewhere else. And I'll be right there. But she let Lauren see it. I'm not sure that was... She told Lauren that she got it. I don't know that she let Lauren uh, see it. Oh, I thought Lauren was still she, there and She watched. told Lauren that she got the idol, and then Lauren said, okay, I got one, I too. I got one, too. So now the, Lauren's decided to share. So... And Lauren tells us, I don't want to draw rocks for War Dog. So tip yeah. for tat. <laughs> They've got the same They're perspective not willing on to each do other. That. Yeah, so this is interesting. So we got... Uh, a couple of hidden immunity idols heading into this big funky two true two tribe yeah uh tribal council She's like hey if they want to vote war dog i'll flip no problem yeah so she doesn't she, feel she any wants more to make loyalty. It to the merge <laughs> in the merge feast <laughs> okay so it's night 16 we're at tribal council with the two tribes okay now this would be a big question would lauren have continued in the game in her current state of disrepair in her body and being able to eat would if she had been voted out would she have chosen to stay in the game and go to edge of extinction mm. oh, or I would see what she you're have mm -hmm. felt the need to go replenish herself i think she probably would have she might have gone to, yeah no i think she would have gone to edge of extinction yeah, I don't know. That uncertainty no. could have overwhelmed her. She's it, already it been crying have. for four days. And she, if she'd already, you know, in her mind accepted, I'm out of the game. Right. <laughs> I got you. But, okay. All right. Moving along. So we're at Tribal Council again. <laughs> Which Victoria says, yeah, there's no side conversations today. It, it's pretty straightforward. Four versus four. Yep. And Lauren yeah. said, yep, we're four strong, too. And we'll stay united. And War Dog says he's there with the Earp brothers and he's Doc Holliday. <laughs> Kevin's, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we're, okay. we're the same. <laughs> they don't know us. That's what Eric says, They're yeah. solid, yep. And uh, I like Wentworth makes her pitch. We're here. We'll, we're four strong, but we'll we got accept anybody open over here. arms. And Gareth yeah. basically dittos that one, too. <laughs> and then, of course, Wendy says, well, I'm in the middle, huh? We thought you were with us. Right. Four strong. We just told them four strong. And now you're in the middle? I really would like to know what David said to her when he called her they, off. They looked the side. like two people that didn't know how to whisper to each other. That was the thing that <laughs> ended up. He said, She doesn't know how to whisper. She's like, She had her hand covering his ear and speaking to the, <laughs> away from him. It was just. That, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's goofy. But, I mean. It's Wendy and David, so goofiness is going to ensue for sure. But that was interesting because I wasn't quite sure if he was trying to pull her over or what at that point. I thought so. With, I thought, yeah. thought so, too. Or giving her or something to disrupt vote her them. vote. Yeah. But she's kind of a contrarian. David tried to pretend like Wendy was with them, that she had never really left, but Eric didn't let that slide. He's like, yeah, that's not really what we heard. <laughs> 
Yep, yep. We'll all go to rocks for her, but, you know. Victoria is not buying any of David's story about how willing he is to draw rocks. So Victoria and Eric start busting some chops there. You really going to come back two, three times and go out that easy drawing a rock? Yeah, I can't I like believe that. it. I like that pitch. You came in this game for the third time to pull a rock, Kelly? Man. Yeah, so lots of... Uh, we have different conversations. And, uh, and then everybody's whispering to time, each other. Time to vote. No hidden immunity idols get played. So that was interesting watching Kelly and Lauren. Well, and I wonder what Eric's presentation was to that Dan comes, and comes David. Next. Let's just get through the vote first. Right? So the vote no, honey. comes back. Yeah, that's that's afterwards. That's before the second vote. Uh, so the votes come in. Now. Wendy gets four votes. Lauren gets four. It's tied. Pardon me. Yeah. So then the conversations break out. And uh, Wendy's okay. alone. She's just sitting there in the middle as conversations happen on each side of her. This is, too, where you see Eric go over and talk to War Dog and David. And then Kelly and Lauren get up and go over and talk to Victoria and Gavin. And... I guess they work it out at this point. And David, when they come back, he's, this is where you get the title for the episode. Yeah, this is the worst cocktail party ever <laughs> with the two tribes coming together. I didn't know where they were going for sure at this point. It's like, I don't know anymore. Yeah, it was good. And the votes come in, and Wendy has finally been voted Woo-hoo! out. Yeah. I get a point for Wendy after all. Yes. So you were quite happy with that. So, yeah. Uh, Wendy hits up Propes and asks if he'll say Big Wendy that you've been voted out. The tribe has spoken, well, which yeah. he, okay, he gives her. Cute, she goes in for a hug, and then he's like, okay, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's your hug. Now go away. She's of, course, a, of course, he knows the game's not over for her. Yeah. She's excited. She tells us as she's walking out down Ooh. the paths, I get a shower. Oh, yeah. And then she says, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm not I don't good. do well with paths. I'm not on paths. Well, and then she's presented with the edge of extinction option. She's like, Poof. did not hesitate. Nope. That's how you as soon do as it. She, Keith. she could read it. Yeah. There you go. So she may be childlike, but she didn't have Keith's struggle at all. No, not at all. She's happy to go to well, edge of extinction. Well, and she doesn't, you can't see any struggles that she's having really physically, mentally. None of that. She doesn't sure. seem to be struggling yes, except she with she getting no, along with people. But That's a huge... But she, she has no social she, game. That's a the, huge struggle for her. She doesn't believe that. I bet you money. Yeah, she, she even she knows think that. She, I don't know. Well, she, even she said that. I don't know. I still think she thinks she's fine. She can just coast. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> I, I thought she even had some self-awareness that she was having difficulties there she she actually highlighted well, it from the I beginning at least respect she did not hesitate i appreciate that to too go right back. i think as fans we that's what we expect from someone who says they're a fan wow two two good episodes a lot happening we got four two good reward challenges two good immunity challenges yeah you joy amazing blah 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 but we had some other people who performed really well, and it was exciting and enjoyed and at that. at this point, there are 12 active players in the game, and we know what that means. And Jeff tells us next on Survivor. Oh, okay. Guess we're going there. Merge. Next, next time on Survivor, it is indeed merge time, and not only that. Drop your buffs. And then come on in, guys, because here comes the crew from <laughs> yep. Edge of Extinction. And, and everybody's uh, like, What? What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And so, it, and then the next time on Survivor basically does a flashback. So we see a boat land there at edge of extinction. The guy hands a, Aubrey something. She comes running back up, and it says, "You know, time time for payback." So what she well, says. That's what she says. The note it, says, "Get in the boat." Yeah. It's time. Yeah. Get in the boat. So I guess we'll have that. Um, they're merged, and we'll have a challenge. And they probably when they're walking in. Still don't know what's happening, other than they get an opportunity to get back in the game. Right. It's probably all they, they know. They got that much, yeah, exactly. So. so that challenge that they're standing in front of, I'm wondering if that's the one that the Edge of Extinction folks are going to have to do. I would or assume Or if, if it'll, so. it'll be something else. I yeah. assumed when they brought them in there that... They're the ones that would be doing it. That they, they they won't be able to partake of the merge feast with them? I don't think the merge feast is there necessarily. Mm-hmm. 
It might be. That would be horrible if all the people from Extinction Island had to smell all these wonderful foods and then go back to they Extinction. They get to have the merge feast. Oh, that would be awful. Yeah, they're not going to do that. I, yeah. At least have because it somewhere away. The person who won their way back in would miss out on the merge feast. And well, so. yeah, no. They'll, that should be after mm-hmm. whoever the challenge is over. And uh, But I think that that's probably the way it's going to work because the challenge is going to be who comes back into the game, right. goes into the merge with them, and then the 13 of them have the merge feast. Mm-hmm. And then we'll see if... Who goes back to exile? Who goes out of the game? Or that's uh, going to be a big exile, question. But extinction. Yeah, who's who will of of the losers from that challenge? Who's going to go back out to edge of extinction? I'm willing to bet Reem's not going to go back for more. Now there's six of them mm-hmm. that are going to compete. Right. So you got Reem, Keith, Chris, Rick, Aubrey, and Wendy. Did you forget Wendy already? Mm-hmm. We just talked about. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Wendy's just basically been there overnight. Right. So she didn't really have any. And she, Aubrey three days, but she didn't get any taste of it. You know, Reem has there been there go. longer. That could be the rosters updated now. But. Possibly why she's you know a little more, like I said, on the edge than the others. Mm-hmm. Her tolerance level has extra days on it. So who who are you pulling for to come back? Wow, I don't know. I mean, you got to want... Not Reem, not Keith. Right. And uh, if Wendy I'm wins... i say not Wendy. I don't well, want to see... Well, I don't really want to see Wendy come back, but if she wins, then okay. She Well, you say that about anyone who wins, she right? She could. She could win. She's good in challenges. But I would rather see... Oh, so really it's, it's between Chris, Rick, and Aubrey for me. And Aubrey's sitting up. An idol and an extra vote. Yeah, so that would be interesting. She's got the potential to, to be it, most disruptive. To come back in the game. Uh, oh, there's just so many things. This if they if they think somebody else might come back, it may affect who they vote out. Right. Right. You know? This is definitely Could the game. Change everything. It's going to change the game. It's, it'll have an impact wow. for sure to bring these people back and then have the competition. Bring one of them back and then see them go back off and have to yeah. choose, I guess, if they're going to go back to the edge of extinction or if they're going to tap out. I, I I don't know who I want. I tell it's you. between if, those three, but. Well, you'd be happy with Chris, Rick, or Aubrey, right? I think Aubrey has the most potential to be disruptive with the idol and the vote, although we just saw Aubrey blow having well, the idol and the vote. Well, that was my thought is, <laughs> Aubrey, honey, you just went out of the game with an idol and an extra vote in your pocket. So Do you really deserve to mm, be there? <laughs> so yeah. I said that when she went up, well, if if you get voted off, then you deserve that because you didn't have to be. You could have not taken a, a risk, but you did. And so, hmm. But it would be interesting to see those things go back in and what she could do now knowing but where does she have to go? Back to Joe, maybe. Well, the returnees. It's the merge now. Well, now the returnees yeah. get the bond together. That's four. You got Aurora. That's yeah. five. They're almost at a majority, right? Not quite. They got to pull yeah. a couple more folks in. and Well, so, but David, if Rick went back, could be the same type thing. He could pull him over if they didn't have Aubrey. Uh, okay, sure. And, the, you know, if they're going that route where they're trusting the returnees. Or the returnees are able to muster a majority alliance yeah. or to draw even, something like that. I feel Seems very unlikely. much that Chris deserves it and um, uh, Rick For me, deserves it's it. easy. I, out of those three, I'll take Rick back, and it's not really even close. I, I'd like to see what he can do with his social skills, his yes. social game. In I that think context. he'd be the most fun. Chris is, eh, you know, it, he's... I think he's gotten the growth that he needs. He's most likely, if it's physical elements, yes. to return, I would say. Granted. Even though he's going to be disadvantaged, even though Keith has pledged to add knots to Chris's, whatever Chris has to uh-huh. do in the challenge, I think Chris can overcome those, mm-hmm. and he still is probably more likely to to make the return. Yeah. I would prefer to see Rick come back in somehow. Don't, I think I would, too. Don't know that... He's got a good chance, but 
I would like to see that. But I really like how he's approached the game. He's up. I want to see more of him watch. out of the ones that are out there. Yes, I most exactly. want to see more of Rick's game. That's where I am. Because Chris has issues, too. Yeah, he and does. He still has issues. He's got and, some growth things he and needs I think to finish that off. they would bring him back probably some other season. Maybe. Maybe. I, I don't maybe know. Maybe not. Yeah. But, but then they might rip, too, because Because you, you got other people who, who's are already ahead of Chris. So. so, but I couldn't really care less about Wendy, Reem, or Keith. They can go home. That's fine with me. Yeah, I think there's a there's certainly a risk that Wendy could return. Yes, like you there said, is. because she's she's definitely got some skills and challenges, and her doesn't seem like her ankles bothering her anymore in, in that yeah. regard. So when it comes to challenges, she she could pull out a win. But oftentimes, when there's a mixture like that, uh, men and women, mm-hmm. and it's an individual win, right? They don't make it extremely physical. Yeah, it's, it's possible. something that everyone could do yeah so it'll end with a puzzle more than likely so you'll have to get yourself out of a cage and then have some obstacles to go over to maybe and then solve a puzzle at the end maybe yeah we when you see those little slats of bamboo like that and cordage like i said it just reminds me of those where they've got to you know retrieve something by tying those together and, and pulling that off and obviously he he'll have opportunities to practice that other people could too so they could potentially practice just like him i felt like aubrey was playing to the camera when she said time for payback yeah i thought that was totally for the camera sure yeah well i I don't i don't doubt it's a true emotion it's just her being able to deliver on it that's not really yeah something you associate with aubrey right how about a gsfl update i can do that okay Thank you, All Steve, right. for running the update. That was a special manual update for yes. uh, a special occasion like that. Not something we can handle. Yeah. Takes the expert for that. Okay, there were five people who are tied in first place with 24 points. Mm-hmm. Stacy. Hey, one of five. 39 people uh, lost their USB for Aubrey and two for Wendy. 130 people lost a safe point for Aubrey and 51 for Wendy. Mm. And 35 people gained a vote-off point for Aubrey. You. Yes. And 209 people gained a vote-off point for Wendy. (laughs) Good job. So that was my thought for picking her is, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anybody could go home. There's so many options. You know, here's the most likely three or four. But it it could be anybody. But Wendy's always a good bet. Silly, silly me. I thought David is so incompetent at challenges. If they can just get rid of him, they'll be able to solve a puzzle and win. But it turns out they're all relatively incompetent in challenges. Exactly. So that's what that's why I shied away from Wendy. I thought, oh no, they'll they'll be desperate to win and they'll finally get rid of David. All right. Eh. Good deal. Side challengers. Okay. With twenty four points in first place is Stacy. Aha. Twenty three, Iron Dave with twenty one points. Cold Mike, Jay Kindred, Jack, Jeremiah, Jonathan, and Randy. With 20 points, Brandon, James, and Shannon, and Slappy. With 19 points, we have Drew and Parker. And with 18 points, we have Brad. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's how she's shaping up. All right. Well, I'm very much looking forward to the listener feedback show. We've done a long recap here, but that's what we do. We take care of the recap, so you don't have to spend any of your precious three minutes doing recap you can focus on what you observe now i always have some starter questions that are in the show notes for the recap shows a lot of times it's a you know a common set but it it's all along the lines of you know who do you think's playing the best who's at risk as we move forward for uh in in the course of the game and who do you think's gonna in in this particular scenario the question around extinction island is Who's going to be willing to go back and who's going to call it quits? Do you think anyone's really going to give up and say tap out and say they're done? Before the challenge? No. No, no, no. no. Oh, I'm okay. not saying that at all. I'm saying after they find out that they're not returning, are they going to be willing to go back out there again? Rick, 
absolutely would go. I think Wendy will go back out there. Oh, Aubrey yeah. probably will too. So would Chris, but I think Reem and Keith are up in the They're air. They're questionable, especially Reem, I think, yeah. right now. But Keith too, if he gets discouraged. So I'm curious to hear what, mm. what the other super fans think about the potential that someone will tap when they don't make it back into the game who who might not be willing to go back out there in that hardship and uh, wait for a second opportunity to return so yeah those starter questions are in the show notes looking forward to hearing from you the voicemail line 206-350-1547 toll free 844-643-8737 the email joanne and stacy show at gmail.com if you're not uh, okay with calling in or recording your own voice and sending that as an attachment in the email, you can always write it up and either Joanne or I will read it into the listener feedback show on your behalf. We've just been having a blast with the listener feedback mm-hmm. shows, having some big shows and a lot of people and still new folks showing up, which always tickles us. We've been going for so long and then have some people <laughs> just out of the blue say, hey, 14 I, years. Yeah. Just uh, found your podcast, and they want to be a part of the listener feedback show. We always encourage that. And we've got a great cast of super fans who check in with us from time to time. Love hearing from you. So we're looking forward to hearing everybody's thoughts about the double episodes, what that means as we head into the merge, and how you think the game's going to change now as we drop it into merge gear because it might be an opportunity for some people to fly under the radar now that were potentially yeah. worried about showing up at Tribal I Council in a Tribe of Five. I do think that's going to shake up how people are thinking. Sure, yeah. Do you really think Joey Amazon can win every single challenge between now and the finale? No, but I've had a feeling all along that it's possible for him to win. That's why I put him in my Final Four. Do you think somehow he's going to win without winning all the individual immunity challenges, huh? Mm, possibly now with this twist. I okay. don't know. I I like Joe. What can I say? All right. So it's not always about logic. Sometimes it's just about who you like. I didn't say I wanted him and to win. I have Eric because my USB. Yeah. That's and and that's what the listener feedback's all about, right? It's getting you getting to share your view. We look forward to hearing from you. Anything else you want to say? Nope. I think I, we covered it. Yeah. Love these two episodes. Wish it was like this every week. Have a good one. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.